All right, hi everyone. I'm Zach with HKN. Uh, today we're going to make a video for uh, an either e really either um, communication series class, um, digital or analog. Um, it's an important uh, concept. Uh, stochastic processes. So the idea with a stochastic process is that it's a, um, a a process over time, right? So we could call it let's just call it x of t. Um, let's say we have some function over time x of t. Now, the 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 term um, stochastic kind of implies some kind of uncertainty, randomness to our our process. Okay, so so the idea with okay, so how do I say this? The Okay, so the definition, I suppose, of a stochastic process is that for each instant in time, right? We have this, we have this function of time, and for each instant in time, the value of that function is going to be a random variable. Um, and we're going to make a couple assumptions in this video that you're somewhat familiar with um, probability and what a random variable is. So, f so for every single t, x of t is a random variable. Okay. And that's, pr that's pretty loose, right? So the extreme of that would be just like the most random s signal or process you could possibly think of, just all over the place, no way to param parameterize it, right? Um, and uh, we run into those sometimes, like the stock market's kind of like that. There's, there's a bunch of things like that. But um, we... If we're going to do engineering or math with something, we kind of want to, we have to parameterize it somehow, right? So we're going to accept that we run into stochastic processes, and then we're going to try to constrain them just a little bit, okay? So what are some things, what are some statistical things we could do with a, a random process? We could find what the, um, we could find what the expected value of x of t is okay. Remember, every for every single t, um, x of t is a random variable, so it makes sense to think about its expected value. Now, one of the questions we have to ask is: um, is, um, is is this a is this a function of t, right? Or is does the expected value of x of t change with time, right? And, and obviously, it's going to be hard to parameterize our process if that's true, if it is a, a function of time, right? Because, okay, this, this would be a parameter, okay? So if this changes with time, then our parameters change with time and everything kind of falls apart or becomes more complex than necessary. Another thing we could, another parameter we could come up with is the expected value of x of t1, sometime t1, multiplied by x of t2, some other time. Um, this, it, this is called, oh, well, this is a mean, right? This, so the expected value of something is its mean. Um, this, it, the term is autocorrelation. I'll write that. Or, yeah. So what this this is a little bit harder to see. So this is saying if we take our process at time t1, our process at time t2, multiply them together, what is the average value of that multiplication? Um, so again, if our if our if our process is completely random, um, this value is going to be different for every possible value of t1 and t2, right? There's, it's, so it, it's still not a parameter in that case. So what we, what we want to do is we want to restrict or we want to deal with stochastic processes that are something that we call um, wide sense stationary. And this is opposed to... Um, strict sense stationary, which we won't really get into because it's it's a harder constraint. Um, so 
what does wide sense stationary mean? Okay, so when our process is wide sense stationary, we have that the expected value of x of t is it a constant or zero? Constant. Right. Okay. So the ex so if we're wide if we're wide sense stationary to satisfy that the expected value of x of t has to be some constant value, right? So we can say for our entire process, its average value is such and such, OK? So then that becomes a, an actual parameter that describes our process. That's important. And we're further going to say that to be wide sense stationary, um, the, expected, the autocorrelation, expected value of x t1, x t2, is this has to be has to be a function of the of only the difference between t1 and t2 okay so this is a function of we'll say the absolute value of t2 minus t1 where usually we would we would take t2 to be greater than t1 that's not important but um, okay so what is yeah so so by Putting this restriction on our process, we can we can come up with some parameters that describe it. It's still random, right? We only have an expected value of x of t and an expected value of its you know correlation um, or, or its correlation. Yeah. Um, so it's still somewhat random, but we have a couple things we can use to describe it. All right. So what is so we'll give an example of a stochastic process. One of the most common we run into is something we call um, white noise. So what is white noise? White noise is defined as a process or a signal whose, um, so this is kind of a definition, so expected value of x of t is equal to zero. So um, just as much of the process is negative as is positive. And the autocorrelation. Um, okay. Well, let me see how I. Yeah, okay. So let's go back down here just for a minute. Now we said if we're wide sense stationary, our autocorrelation is a function of the difference between our two times, right? So let's just say that um, T2 minus T1. Let's, let's call that some number tau, right? And then we have that the expected value is just a function of tau, right? Um, so this is just a function of, function of the difference between the two times, OK? So now we're going to say that the, well, OK. So in your book, you're going to see this autocorrelation denoted as R of tau if your process is wide sense stationary, right? Because we said it's a function of the difference, tau being the difference between the times. Okay. Finally, we can say that the expected value of x1, x at t1 times x at t2 is equal to the expected value of x at t1 times x at t1 plus tau. So now this function, we have t1 and t1. This is just a function of tau. We'll call this r. I'll call rx tau. Now for, for white noise, this is equal to um, some constant. Let's call it, you'll see it a lot called n naught over 2 times a delta function of tau. Now that's a, that's a little confusing, but if we, if we actually draw out maybe what it means, it, it might make more sense. So, well, the expected value of our process being 0 makes some sense, right? So let's draw, it's a function of time, and it would just kind of look like Imagine this was about as random as possible. Okay, it would just be something centered, roughly centered around zero, 
where we don't have anything. It's not its average value isn't above or below zero. Okay. Now, what does this part mean though? This is saying that the okay. So when does the delta function take on a value? It takes on a value when its argument is zero. Everywhere else, when the argument is not zero, the delta function has a value of zero. At the point where its argument is zero, it has uh, an infinite pulse that integrates to one. Maybe we won't really get into that. Um, and we're scaling it by a constant here. So, so really, what, what does tau being equal to zero mean? Remember what tau is. Tau is the difference between two times right here. Right? So if t1 minus t, uh, t2 minus t1 is equal to 0, um, t2 is equal to t1. Right? So, so for a, um, yeah, we're getting a little jumbled here. But for, for white noise, the, the correlation, autocorrelation, only has a value if t1 is equal to t2. Okay, and in that case, um, so we're going to come from here over here. We're going to say we know this has a value, expected value of x t1, and for it to have some non-zero value, the other part is going to have to also be x t1, right? The t's have to equal each other. That is going to equal the expected value of x squared or x of t squared right um so yeah it's still a little bit what exactly is it saying so this is saying that if we pick a point in our process here if we pick a an instant in time say we pick that instant then at the very next instant in time this process is not correlated with itself at this instant we can we can't say anything for sure about what the the multiplication between this value and this value is going to be right. So that ju that means that just kind of indicates it's the most random thing kind of we could possibly run into. We could go from, you know, a maximum value here straight in the next instant to a, a, a minimum value, and yeah. so that so we model it. We model um, any kind of noise we run into. Say if you build a circuit, um, you'll have a couple little electrons doing stuff that are, you don't expect them to do in there. Some randomness. You see fuzziness. Or an audio signal, you'll see a little fuzziness that's really not supposed to be there. Any of those kind of um, errors we model as white noise because it's it's relatively easy to work with because of these parameters here. Um, and so maybe maybe next time we'll we'll do um, a little more useful or not useful, just a, a little more realistic stochastic process and try to find its parameters and whatnot. But this is just kind of a um, general background on, on what this what this stuff is really saying. So um, that's it for this week. Uh.